Okay guys, so here we go. This is the um, the information for my laptop. As you can see, it is a Sony Vio Fit 15. If I scroll down here, you'll actually be able to see that I am indeed running a GeForce GT 740M. It's not a particularly powerful card, but here's what I have now in a GPU-Z. As you can see, it's a GT 1030. Um, you can see the clocks right there. These clocks aren't actually um, represented correctly. So I'm going to open up HW Info here and scroll down until I see the video adapter. As you can see, there's my laptop again, so there's no confusion. Um, and then there's the GT 1030. As you can see, there it is right there. You can see all the information as well as the more correct clocks. And now I'll also show you guys what's happening with the PCI buses and that my bus is actually not hot pluggable. You will see that one of the ports is, but not the one that the GPU is actually on, which is port 3. So you can see right there, not hot pluggable, but yet my GPU still works. Alright guys, so in this next part, we're going to go over what happens if you go into your device manager, but yet you don't actually see the card. This will be kind of the first step, um, you know, the first troubleshooting step. So if you go under display adapters, and either you're still seeing your old card or if you still happen to be seeing absolutely nothing aside from the integrated GPU which it, for most people is probably going to be Intel um, you may have an AMD integrated graphics card if you have an AMD processor but for this scenario we're going to focus on the Nvidia cards so as you can see mine is in here but if yours isn't um, there's a couple of things that could have possibly happened um, one of them is if you're on MPCIe just like me um, there's a high chance that there's a whitelist. Now, is there a way to get around this? There most definitely is, and there are a couple of ways of doing so, um, but one of the first things that you should try and do is to actually basically go under your laptop again um, very carefully and using latex gloves. You want to remove the eGPU cable, and you're going to plug in um, your Wi-Fi card. And uh, you have to do all of this with the laptop off, first of all. Um, so when you do that, you're going to basically turn your laptop on, um, you're going to let the Wi-Fi card get discovered, then as soon as the computer boots, put it to sleep, you're going to unplug the Wi-Fi card, and then while the eGPU is turned on, so make sure the fan spinning, lights are on, so forth, you're going to plug it into the port where the Wi-Fi card used to be, and screw it down correctly. Now after this, you're going to resume the computer from sleep and see if you're able to detect anything in the device manager. Now, there will be a couple of different scenarios that I'm going to get into later on in regards to what exactly you need to troubleshoot and when you see which type of image and what to do next. But for the time being, what I'm going to focus on is if you already did that and it's still not showing up. Well, you're going to need to get a software called um, Do-It-Yourself eGPU. Now, this is, um, this is pretty cool software because it's basically an extension of... Um, the software that um, would be in your BIOS or firmware rather it allows you to modify a number of settings that um, you know otherwise wouldn't be accessible or that you would otherwise have to get a modded BIOS for now if you don't want to pay for this for program you know you can still look for a modded BIOS you know nobody's stopping you of course um, but you know I think at 15 bucks this will basically save you just so much time so you know what happens next you know what do you do after you get this software essentially and I'm going to go over that right now, but one of the first things is after you get the software, you're going to want to do the following. So you're going to also want to get a program called Paragon. Um, in my case, it's the uh, Hard Disk Manager 15. I'd recommend getting the professional version, and there's a good reason for this. And the primary reason basically is that um, you're going to need to switch your disk from a UEFI install and from GPT you want to switch your disk into MBR now I know this is probably kind of you know crazy you may think like oh I have to do all these extra steps it's actually not as difficult as you think so again you know you're going to want to go down here you're gonna look for products for Windows and then hard disk manager now you know there's now I guess uh, drive copy 15 and hard disk manager 16 it doesn't really matter which one you get um, 16 just as good as 15 I have 15 personally but anyway, you're going to download this software. So what you're going to do next is I'm going to actually launch mine. And I'm going to go down here and show you what you need to do. And the reason for this is because most Windows installs nowadays, there's a pretty high chance that they're going to be a UEFI GPT disk. So the problem with that is that when you try to run eGPU and install it, the basic way is that it essentially won't let you do it on your disk. So that's kind of a problem. 
because if you want to run the software, your disk has to be an MBR disk. Now, as you can see, mine currently is, but it used to be a GPT disk, but this is pretty easily remedied. Basically, what you're going to go in here is you're going to say convert. So if your disk was GPT previously, which mine was, you're going to hit convert. Um, it'll start the conversion process, and you're going to want to, you know, say, you know, keep all the partitions basically because you want to keep everything the same. You will hit the apply button right here and that'll start the process. It'll ask you to restart your computer. Um, now at this point, it is also pretty important that you have either your Windows disk ready or you have a Windows recovery USB um, available as well as you know potentially something like Paragon's recovery software, which you can also get from them. And the reason for this is that sometimes when you convert the disk, even though it's supposed to be like a really easy, simple process, um, the OS just decides not to boot because there's something wrong with the boot sectors or the master boot record, so on and so forth. So what you'll want to do then is basically open up the you know Windows disk or USB and get that process going in terms of doing the startup recovery or if you're using Paragon's tools um, to go in and basically fix the boot record, um, you know, fix any partition issues and fix startup um, issues that may be present there. Now, when you go back in here, what you're gonna look for is, I've actually downloaded the program to my local disk, so I'm gonna go ahead and open this up. It's my in my eGPU folder. You're going to scroll down, and as you can see, there's gonna be a folder or file rather that says set up disk image. This is what sets up the eGPU application to allow you to modify certain settings in the BIOS that otherwise wouldn't have existed previously. Now on my computer despite me doing the conversion of the disk from GPT to MBR it still decided not to run and so at this point you might think okay well crap you know this software doesn't work I'm gonna try and return it but it's actually not true you can get this to run still and what I ended up doing specifically is I realized that the software comes with this image file for the eGPU program which you can actually load up onto a USB and this is great because that means that now instead of having to you know try and modify your Windows startup settings you can just create a USB disk that's actually going to have this in here naturally now I tried a number of programs to burn this program onto a USB um, I tried Rufus, I tried Yummy, I tried a bunch of other um, different programs. What ultimately ended up working for me is a program called Ultra ISO. So you can download this online. I'll also have a link um, in the description below for the video. So you're going to go to Ultra ISO. You're going to open up an image, which is the system image. So in this particular case, we're going to navigate to the eGPU image. We're going to hit open. So you have this guy right here. What you're going to do next is you're going to go in here and look for make a disk or write a disk image. So you're going to select this, you're going to click that button. Once that pops up, you will have your USB drive in here, assuming you have it inserted into your computer. If you don't, just insert it in there. Um, you know, you're going to have this image file for the eGPU setup, and you're basically going to say write. At this point, it will ask you if you want to format that USB drive. And you want to say yes, you know, obviously don't keep anything important on that USB drive. That's not going to do you any favors. But basically, once that's written to, you'll be able to actually get this whole thing going. And I'm going to actually record the next part of this, which is when you go into the eGPU setup and what you need to do and what you need to activate in order to get your GPU to actually show up um, within the Windows Device Manager. This will be a really important step and it's going to be a prelude to potentially any other errors that might come up once the eGPU does actually end up showing up in the Windows Device Manager. So hold on for that in this next part.